All right, so for animation, once we have created a storyboard sketch and we know the beginning, middle, and end, we know what assets we need to uh, build and bring together in order to tell our story. So we first think of it as, as just making a digital comic book of these keyframes, but we have to be smart about it. We don't want to merge all of those assets together into single images because we know we're going to want to animate between each of these panels as well. So in the storyboard, these are keyframes, but in between each one, this gutter, that represents time passing, right? And some of these moments, we're going to really want to slow down. So when I zoom in, I have to realize, okay, what assets do I need in order to be able to zoom in? And when I zoom out again or pan out, what assets do I need, you know, for all the space in between these? And for when his eyes squint and his body tenses and he starts breathing fire, it's not just going to be one image of him breathing fire. That's going to be a growing fire. So we have to build those assets. So in my assets folder, I've started to collect certain things, even some animated files, some GIF files that are sequences of images, right? So I showed this at the end of the last video. And we can actually composite with these as well. The difference between our other compositing projects, where we're bringing lots of layers and sources together, is that this doesn't need to be as, as high in resolution, because you don't print an animation. You show an animation on a screen. Standard screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch, which is very different than standard print resolution, which is 300 pixels per inch. So for this, the very first thing I'm going to do with my major asset file, because I'm going to be animating with my creature and the setting, so this is assignment 3 that I have renamed assignment 5, just my assets, um, I need to shrink this down. It's not okay that this is over a gig big. I can't animate with one image that's over a gig. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it to a square. And that's why I recommend you, you storyboard in a square. Even if it's more beautiful this way, we want to focus on the movement, right? And so by cropping to a square, it makes it a lot easier to have focal points that make sense and not waste a lot of processing. So how can I force it into a square? Well, when you use the crop tool, you'll see the tool options at the top. I just want to make it a one-to-one -one ratio. That's a square. And then I can shrink the square just like with the transform box. By holding down shift and option, I can shrink it to the inside. I can move it up or down. And I have to kind of decide, well, what matches my storyboard idea? And this is good. That will showcase enough space for the character, enough space for the things it interacts with. And then maybe, because I'm going to zoom in later, I'm just going to go to the edges of my composition with my initial square and then zoom in a little closer. So it was 1.1 gigs before. Now it's just 900 megabytes. So cropping helped a lot. But look at all of these different layers. Now I have to organize and think like an animator. And even before I start consolidating layers to save memory, I want to go to image size. And I don't need it to be 350 pixels per inch anymore. Instead, I only need it to be 150 pixels per inch. So once you crop to a square, make it 150. And then I don't need it to be 11 by 14 anymore. I actually want it to be 8 inches. And if it's just a little off of square, I'm going to uncheck the, uh, the chain link there and just force it to be 8 by 8. That will slightly, just barely warp everything so that it's an exact square. And that warps everything, every layer. Now that looks really small, but when I view it at 100%, you'll still see that that fills the screen. Right? And because we're working at screen resolution now for an animation, that's good enough. 150 is really good for a high def screen at 8 inches. Now it's only 138 megabytes, which is way better than 1 gig. 
and one layer is only four megabytes. So what elements do I actually need for animation? And I get pretty ambitious, right? So not only is my creature gonna move and eat the coral, so I definitely need to have my creature as a separate layer, the coral as a separate layer, but I'm also gonna keep quite a few of these um, atmospheric elements because I like them and I can animate with them. Now, it'd be great if I can kind of consolidate them all together. So let's take all these layers, not the overlay layer, but all the layers on top of the coral, and let's see if I merge those together, what happens? Layer, merge layers, okay? So it makes them more opaque. And it does that because now it's normal mode instead of soft light, right? But if I keep that at soft light, it might not be as good as it was before I'll separate it out, but it makes it a much more usable animation asset. And do I like it? Yes, in general, I like it. I can work with it. The overlay layer, do I want it? I think I want it. How can I incorporate it? I'm just gonna leave it on at the top, right? And mess with it if I need to. The next layer is the coral. I definitely need this. In fact, this is one of my main characters, right? This is the thing my character interacts with. So I'm gonna lay, because it's one of my main characters, I might give it a color, like green. Now I have mist. Do I want that mist? Do I want this mist? These are all things in the sky. Do I want the reflection here? No. Do I want the reflection here? Eh, not really. You gotta simplify sometimes. Do I want that cloud? Yes. So now I'm gonna take all those cloud elements, merge those together. Right, and then set that to soft light. Or maybe pin light, <coughs> let's see. No, soft light. Now that is behind the coral. And so that can be useful, I can use that. Now I've got my creature, mark it green. So I've got my creature, underneath my creature, I've got all these kind of background effects. Now, do I care about anything that's behind my creature as being something I can animate? The mountain's not going to move, but these clouds might, right? The stars might. So I'm going to keep these. I'm going to mark them as violet, the clouds and the stars. I might be able to animate with those. But everything else, I'm going to merge together. that's behind my character. So these are layers of depth. So Command E, it's all there together. Yep, and that all worked. And I'm gonna build up, let's see, a little bit more opacity on this background cloud. I just am. Yeah, that's good. And then move, combine um, both of these with the background up behind. Okay, so you do as much as you can. I'm just making some little changes to consolidate these, like the mist that's in front of my creature. I'm just stealing from the mist layer, and so I'm using clone stamp just on current layer. I'm gonna paint that Come on. On that back foot a little bit. And maybe I'm going to 
dodge it a little bit too. All right, this is looking better. Okay, so now I've really isolated it. Now it's only 57 megabytes, right? Even better. I've still got a lot of layers here. A lot of them are just gonna stay all together, like all this background stuff, except for the stars. So if I can't merge them together because of the different layer styles, I can group them. I put them in a folder and that's locked. So that's not gonna change. Now the, the cloud I might change, right? And then the stars I might change. But then this background one, it's locked. It doesn't change. I can get rid of my sketch, I can get rid of the gray behind. All right, now I have my main elements, right? And this can change. Okay, so pretty much I just built my first animation frame. Do you guys agree? It shows the character, it shows the setting, it has stars and clouds. There it is. So this is my assets folder. I'm gonna update it and save it. Now that I have this at the right resolution, which is eight by eight at 150, now I can make my first stage frame. So I'm going to open a new Photoshop file and I'm gonna do it by first selecting all of this. Command. So first I select all of this, but I don't want to select all of just one layer, right? So command A is the shortcut for selecting all, but I actually want this whole flat image. So this is what I do. This is going to be a process we do a lot in this kind of animation. So I'm going to hit command D to deselect. I'm going to go to my very top layer, which is the overlay layer. And I am going to hold down option and I'm going to go to the top and say layer merge visible. So what does that do? It puts all of those image choices into one 100% opaque layer. Then I hit, once I've copied it, I'm going to say file new, new Photoshop file. Because I've copied something onto the clipboard that is eight by eight at 350, it will automatically want to start a new file that is that same pixel dimension. And I want it to match exactly. Now I could say file, new file, eight by eight by, uh, by 150. Sorry, that's what I'm doing. But if I have it on the clipboard, that will be its defaults. Now I'm in a new Photoshop file. This is gonna be what we call the stage file. And I'm going to hit Command V, or I could say edit paste. And I'm gonna paste, and I don't want that to show again, that finished frame right in there. So then I'm going to save this image or this Photoshop file as my stage. Now that I've saved it as Carl assignment five stage, this is where all my finished frames will go. And it's just the, the most basic way of doing frame by frame animation. So in your assets Photoshop folder, that's where you build your image out of a lot of different layers and components that you can move around, that you can animate. It's only gonna get more complicated. But once you've built the image you want, then you flatten it all into um, a new merged layer on top. You copy it and you paste it into your stage. So we're gonna work between these two images. The stage is the only place you actually play animations.